Faith endurance. Are you ready this morning, brothers and sisters? Here we go. Thank you so much. I know I was sharing a lot, but I, I just felt like you needed to know, uh, wanted to catch you up on those things. For the Philippines update, um, I've, I've uh, put it out in the hallway as well if you want to take another look at that. We can let you know more later as well. A lot more going on. But we want to uh, turn to the, we want to turn this morning to the word of the Lord. Let me pray for us as we sit, switch our gears. Amen. Lord, here we are this morning gathered in this place. Uh, and God, uh, we just, uh, we tune our ears now to hear you this morning. We have sung praises to you, Lord. We've worshiped you with our giving. Um, we, Lord, we, we've worshiped you through sharing love with one another. Lord, our hearts have just been overwhelmed and and full of rejoicing as we hear about uh, the two pa pastors' wives who are remaining faithful even though their husbands have been martyred. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for the updates that we're hearing uh, in the Philippines, and we ask that you would strengthen them. May they run with endurance. Bless them, Lord. Thank you for letting us be part of the work that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So, okay, easy worship, please get me to my slide, thank you, ah, there we go, got it, I, you're going to, Run with endurance. This is our third part and our conclusion, Lord willing. Last night as I, I, when I came back from the hospital, I, I had, was praying yesterday morning in the afternoon as well. Um, thanks so much, Kim. Should work now. Now it will work. <laughs> um, but I was praying. It's like, Lord, you're going to have to help me run with endurance today. It was, it was um, uh, quite, a, quite a long day, but the Lord has helped. This is our third part. Uh, and Lord willing, it's our conclusion. Run with endurance is the theme the Lord gave us for our 33rd anniversary. And as I've said before, just want to remind you, it's not something that we that we uh, choose lightly or that we think about lightly. We believe the Lord gives us uh, His Word to move forward in every church season. So this is from Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Run with endurance. And um, this is the third part. So let's go back again to Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses, that is uh, Hebrews 11, the great chapter of faith, right? Okay, ready? Let's make it real this morning. Hebrews 12, 1. Since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses, that crowd increased by at least one overnight. Andrew is now part of that group. Amen? Praise the Lord. Let us also strip off every weight that slows us down and the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. It's interesting to me that uh, you have weight on one hand and sin on the other. One is sin is sin. Weight is not sin. And yet both of these things, weight and sin, can have the same effect in our lives, can't they? Weight can slow us down. Sin can slow us down. And so the writer to Hebrews says, get rid of it. Strip it off. Run with endurance. Get rid of both of these things. Um, and then let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. I look at some of you, and I don't know how I could run the race that you are running. I don't think I could do it. But God has not called me to run your race. And God has not called you to run my race. Sometimes people talk to me and they say, oh, you're a pastor. Oh, I could never be a pastor. It's so hard and whatever. And me, when I'm praying each day, climbing sun Sunshine Mountain, you know when I climb the mountain, almost every day, thank you, Lord, for calling me to be a minister of your word because he gives me grace and endurance and joy in doing what he's called me to do. But I look at some of what you're doing, I think, I couldn't do that. How can you go through that? But God gives each one of us grace for the, for the path that we run. And therefore, we guard our hearts against complaining and comparing, right? 
guard your hearts from complaining and comparing because both of these things can, can poison your heart and they can slow you down. Instead, just say, God, this is the race I'm running. Give me endurance. Help me to run the race that you have called me to run. And so Hebrews 12, 1, how do we, and then Hebrews 12, 2, how do we do it? We do this. We run with endurance. How? By fixing our eyes on Jesus. Remember the word fixing? Special Greek word that means really focus your atten attention on something and look away from the things that will distract you. We do this by fixing our eyes on Jesus, the founder and the finisher, uh, the author and the completer. You heard this morning the words from the Lord, right? The words of encouragement that some of you gave to all of us. Um, he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. The work that he's begun in you, he's going to finish it. If you will hold on to him, hold on to him, he's going to get, he's gonna get you through. He's going to get you through. He is the founder and finisher of our faith because of the joy. Now, how did he do it? So we do it by looking at Jesus. How did he do it? Because of the joy set before him, he endured the cross. This is what we talked about last week. We look to Jesus. That's how we run with endurance. How did Jesus do it? Jesus said, the joy set before me is ampi. Ampi says, me? Yes, Ampi, you. He began something in you. He's going to finish something in you. The sh joy set before him was and is Manuel. He says, me? Yes. He's begun something in you. He wants to finish it in you. And he looks at us, Jesus, even then, the joy set before him was to bring you and me and to bring people throughout history from, from then until, until the end of time to start us on a pathway that we will make it all the way to heaven. Amen. And this is the joy that's set before him. That's how Jesus did it. So we look at, at him and that's how we do it. Because of the joy set before him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Forget it. Shame's not worth it. The joy is, is, is worth more than the pain that I go through. Now he's seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. He stood when Stephen entered heaven, the first martyr. I wonder if he stood when Andrew entered heaven yesterday. I don't know. I wonder if he will stand when you and I make it all the way through. But he's waiting for us. He's waiting for us. And we are his joy. So that's how we do it as well. Now, um, I want to talk for a while this morning about the rewards of running with endurance. We've got to know why we're running. We've got to know why it's worth it, right? How many of you are going through some tough times right now, no joke, and you think, I don't know if this is worth it or not? How, how many of you? Yeah? I, I don't... It, it, and you're not saying, I'm going to give up and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn my back on God. But some of you this morning, what you're going through, it's pretty tough and you'd like to take the foot off the gas. You'd like to slow down. You'd like to say, let me find an easier way. You have to know this morning why it's important that you don't do that. You need to know the rewards of running with endurance. Ready? Okay, here are rewards. And I'm looking at my scriptures and I'm looking at the time and I'm gonna cut some things. Let's let's see how I let's see how I do. Okay. <laughs> A reward of endurance. Here we go. Let's look at some verses together. Let's start with Second Timothy and as we look at this, we're going to look at verses 3 through 7 and there's some other things. Uh, Paul is a great place to start when we talk about endurance and rewards. More than any other writer in the New Testament, our brother Paul talks about enduring. Probably close to 20 times he talks about endure, endure, endure. Now here we come to this letter. It's his last letter. This was written shortly before he was martyred. We, the Bible doesn't tell us how Paul died. But we know that he was in prison, Nero was the emperor, and probably Paul was beheaded, probably, as, as, as far as we know. So Paul's in prison, 
and he's writing to a young man, youngish man, and he's encouraging him to keep on going. Paul knows, I'm going to be gone soon, but I want you to keep on going. And that's really encouraging to us. So Paul writes to Timothy. He wants him to come visit him in prison. And this is what he says to him. Because Timothy was a little bit uh, shy or, or, or timid, maybe. M m timid, maybe that's the best word. Okay, ready? Here's the word, endure, right? Verse 3, endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier in active service entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life so that he may please the one who enlisted him as a soldier. Okay, quick question. How many of you here this morning, I'm, I'm guessing, how many of you have served in the military at one time? You have key? I did not know that. It's all these, it's all these Brits among us, right? <laughs> okay. John was with the, John, were you with the Gurkhas also? He was with the Gurkhas, yeah. And Keith served as well. So was it easy, or especially in the beginning, basic training as you prepared? How easy was it, John? Don't say it was easy. You're going to mess up my sermon. <laughs> I, want, I, want, I, I, I want John and Keith to say, it was so hard. <laughs> We, we didn't know if we'd make it or not. <laughs> That's it. It, actually, it, it, was, it was pretty tough. Maybe in some places, not so much, but it was pretty tough. So Paul gives three examples to Timothy. Here's the first one. Um, endure hardship like a, a good soldier. Why? The one who has brought him, in, enlisted him into the military wants him to make it. He brings him into the military. And so Paul uses this example first. And he says, you don't get mixed up in the affairs of everyday life. Okay, we're enduring. That's the first example, and I'd like to talk a lot more about that, but I'm not going to, okay? Um, so Paul gives three examples. What's the next one? Second one is, and now this one's great because half of our church, half of you are athletes here this morning. So and I, I know we're going to get some good responses here. I'm, I'm looking right over here at our, at our, and where's Johnny? I'm looking at our rugby players. Uh, in, in Lighthouse this morning. So the second example he gives is, similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. So here's the second example of running with endurance. So those of you who are, uh, as we used to say in China, they used to say, are you a sporter? They would say sporter. That's uh, an athlete. That's what they would say. So let me ask you something. Uh, how hard do you train? How much do you prepare? Julia, Roma, Alana, Johnny? A lot. Is it hard? Do you get tired? Physically and mentally, right? But if you don't train, you can't compete. If you take it easy and mess around, the coach is not going to put you on the field. Your, heart, your heart's not in it, right? You've got to train. You've got to endure hardship for the sake of the game and for the sake of winning. Do you care if you win or lose when you go on the field? Doesn't matter. Just as, just as long as I'm, you know, I, I, I just want to play. You want to win, don't you? You try your hardest. You try your hardest. So Paul uses this example, the second one. You've got to train so that you can complete, compete. That's number two. And then, one, then what's number three? So number one is really vigorous and strong, a soldier. Number two is really strong as well. Um, if Caleb were here right now, I'd be using him as an example because if you've been watching on, on uh, if you've been looking on Facebook at all, apparently Caleb is a super swimmer, right? He's really good, right? Mom, say yes. Yes, he's really good. He's good. Yeah, he competes. I think he does butterfly and butterfly? Breaststroke. Breaststroke. Okay, and others. So when you see Caleb, say, good job, Caleb. <laughs> okay. Then we come to the third one, which is very gentle compared to the first two. Nevertheless, it's an example that we need. So the third one is about a farmer, the hardworking farmer. Okay, now I'm going to get more hands. How many of you at one time or another, have been 
A farmer. Raise your hand. Look around. Look, wait, put them back up. Kim, have you been a farmer? Kim, you know that. Kim's been a farmer. Cap, all Cap, well, Manuel's deciding whether or not he's been a farmer. I don't know. <laughs> okay. His, his, grandfa his grandfather taught him. Catherine, and some of you raised your hands as well. How, so, so a lot, that surprised some of you, right? There are farmers in this group. My, my dad, who's in heaven now for many years, uh, was, was a farmer, and then he went into the military, and then he went to heaven. So, um, but why is farming in this group? Because farmers also have to endure. It's hard, right? You plant. You, you pr before you plant, you prepare the ground. You, you, you pray for rain. You hope for rain. You, you fertilize the ground. You scare away uh, the, the, the birds and the things that would eat the seed. You keep on, you remove the weeds, and you have to endure to receive the harvest. You have to endure to receive the harvest. And so these are the examples that Paul gives to Timothy. And then he says, reflect on what I'm saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all of this. So I want to encourage you this morning, brothers and sisters. Now we're going to look at some, God, I still have plenty of time. We're going to look at some other examples, but here are some of the rewards in the natural of endurance, right? Rewards in the natural. Now, let's look at some of the spiritual rewards. I'm skipping verses all over the, 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 uh, um, uh, the place. So a reward of endurance. Let's look first at James 1, 2, and 4, okay? Here's, a, here's one of the first examples. So James, who is this James? Not, the dis one, not one of the disciples, because James the disciple was the first disciple that was beheaded by Herod. And then Herod messed with Peter and got in trouble and was eaten by worms, as we remember. But look at what James, this is James, the half-brother of Jesus. Ready? James 1, 2 through 4. Dear brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials, pause right there various trials. This is a great word. This word various right here is a Greek word that means many different types, many colors of trials, all sorts of things. Are you going through a financial difficulty? That's one of the trials. Are you suffering something in your health? That's one of the trials. Are you having difficulty in a marriage relationship this morning? That's one of the trials. Are you having difficulty in your work? That's one of the trials. Are you discouraged and, and suffering uh, and fighting against temptation ongoing and you're trying to overcome it and it just keeps on coming at you, keeps on coming at you? That's one of the trials. All of these different trials. Uh, young people, you're at university um, and, and there's this pressure, there's this constant pressure to be like everybody else, right? It, it, you, you want to be accepted. You want to be liked. You want to, be, you want to, to have friendship. And then when you stand for the Lord, it, it, there's a pressure, right? All of these things are included here. And so this is what James says. When you experience these trials, consider it a great joy. I want to stop and laugh right here. How many of you are really happy when trials come your way? How many? You say, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord, for this trial. I was just waiting for it. <laughs> this is not what James means. May I help you this morning? What James means is this. When you are in the trial, not the trial, but when you are in the trial, you can say, thank you, Lord, because you're doing something. You're not grateful for the trial. What you're grateful for and joyful for is that God can take something hard, painful, hurtful, and bring gold out of your life. And brothers and sisters, this is what you need to know this morning. If I could uh, shake you and say, you need to know this. This is one of the rewards of endurance so that when trials come your way, consider it a joy. Why is it a joy? 
For you know that when your faith is tested, it produces in, uh, um, endurance. It produces endurance. How many of you have tried to make yourself a good Christian? Yeah? Have you tried to sprout fruit, good fruit, fruit of, in, of, of patience, fruit of love, fruit of endurance? Guess what? You cannot produce fruit. Did you know that? Only the Holy Spirit can produce fruit in you. But the Holy Spirit in you, as you say, yes, Holy Spirit, work in me. Yes, God, do your work in me. God, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to keep on walking with you. I'm going to run with endurance. When you say that, he brings fruit out of your life. He brings gold out of your life. It produces endurance. Some of you right now are saying, oh, snap. I did not know that that's what happens. I've been complaining and I've been fussing. Hang in there. I've got some other verses for you. And then James says, but endurance must do its complete work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. Don't you want to grow up as a Christian? Yes? Moi aussi. I do too. I want to grow up as a Christian but God will not give it to me as a gift. God will not give it to you as a gift. Kathy, there's one way to grow up as a Christian. You've got to endure. You've got to endure. And as you endure, I'm not picking on you. Kathy says, <gasps> Y'all think when I call your name that the Lord, the Lord gave me all of a sudden a special insight, right? Every once in a while he does. But, but I'm just... I'm engaging you. Endurance must do its complete work. Brothers and sisters, some of you this morning want to give up. You want to give up. It's hard. It's hard. But Claire, you can't give up. Even though you're having trouble with your eyes, you can't give up. Why? Because God's doing the complete work. Brothers and sisters... Okay, stay with me. James 1, verse 4. We fix our eyes on Jesus, the author, and the, the founder, and the what? Finisher of our faith. Now, put that together with James 1, 4. Endurance must do its complete work so that you may be mature and complete. God wants to do a complete work in you. Jesus wants to do a complete work in me. And every time we give up, every time we slow down, every time we say, this is too hard, I want to find an easier way, the work that Jesus wants to do in you and the work that Jesus wants to do in me is cut short. And then Jesus has to wait till another, ch another time, another chance, an opportunity. Come on, let me work in that area again. Let me complete that work in you. However, if you and I will stick with God, stick with Him, and run with endurance, He will do a complete work. We'll grow up in the Lord. We'll grow up in the Lord. And as we grow up in the Lord, brothers and sisters, you and I will produce fruit out of our lives. Baby plants, seedlings don't produce fruit. Mature plants produce fruit. Grown-up plants produce fruit, fruits of righteousness, fruits of salvation in other people, fruits of love, fruits of joy, the fruit of the gospel that is spread to those in darkness. And that comes as you and I grow up in the Lord. That's why we got to grow up. we got to grow up. So we have to run with endurance. And God gets us through. And as we are mature and complete, the fruit of the Holy Spirit grows and matures. It's produced in our lives. We are blessed. Others are blessed. That tough person you're praying for, it might be a husband this morning. It might be a family member this morning. It might be someone at work. Let God do his work in you and see what God does in that person's life. Amen? Amen. Okay. What's another reward? Mm, let's see. Let's see. I'm skipping verses because I have about five minutes.
Okay, Romans 5, 1 and 2. There's no endurance here, but this is part of it. Are you ready? Look at this. Love Romans 5, 1 through 5. Ready? Therefore, so Paul's writing. You're, read it with me. Let's read it together. Therefore, since we have been made right, right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. This is a wonderful passage, a wonderful three verses, and we could stop right there and have a hallelujah meeting, right? Yay, praise the Lord, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, it's so great. But don't stop there, because that's not all of the passage. Here's the reward. Okay, we've just read that, we have a hallelujah meeting, but... Paul doesn't stop there, and this is what he says next. We can rejoice, too, in our problems and trials, for we know that affliction produces endurance. Oh, snap. Again, I didn't know that affliction produces endurance. What is the name of our Jesus? How many of you look back in your life and you think, I blew it. I blew it. I didn't know that affliction was doing, was God was trying to bring something good out of my life. Instead, I look back and I was fussing, I was complaining, I was arguing with God, I was arguing with people, and I, and I blamed God. Why am I going through this? Why is this happening? Oh God, where are you? And then Paul says, inspired by the Holy Spirit, we can rejoice in our problems and trials, for we know that affliction produces endurance. You've blown it. You look at your life and you think, I wasted that. You look at your past and you think, why didn't I know that then? I want to encourage you this morning. Ready? What is the name of Jesus? Jesus is the Redeemer, the Redeemer. Jesus is the Restorer. And the broken places in your life and the defeats in your life and the places where you just blew it, if you will bring it to Jesus, the Redeemer and the Restorer, he can do a work. Now, he might bring you through some more trials to get you through that and to bring gold out of your lives. But if you will give it to God, all of us, how many of you at times you think back and you've got a pain in your heart, right? You've got a pain in your heart. I, I said this. I did this. I, I was this way. And you just think, what a waste. What a waste. God, I'm sorry. I, I wish it hadn't happened. If you'll bring it to God. And you'll put it in his hands. He will bring goodness out of it. He will bring gold out of it. He will bring fruit out of it. Don't stop there. Because verse 4 says, And endurance produces proven character. And proven character produces hope. What is this proven character? Is Jesus in you? Is Jesus in you? That's proven character. Is Jesus in you? It's gentle Jesus in you. It's loving Jesus in you. It's the forgiving Jesus in you. It's the Jesus who endures insults and keeps on going. It's Jesus in you. It's the character of Jesus in you. And endurance produces her proven character and proven character produces hope. What is the hope? It's not, and I can see we're going to have, we're going to have a part four. We're going to have a part four. Let's end with this this morning. Proven character produces hope. And what is the hope? The hope is not, it's not, well, I, I hope God loves me. I hope I make it. 
No, 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 brothers and sisters. The hope of the Bible, the hope that Jesus talks about, the hope that the Holy Spirit inspires is the hope in you that is as solid as a rock. It's as solid as a rock. I have this hope. This hope in me is secure. I'm going to make it. I'm a child of God. He's going to see me through. When I'm weak, he's strong. I'm struggling, but you have begun a good work in me, and you will complete the good work that you've begun in me. Lord, I've been praying, and I feel like giving up because the answer hasn't come yet. The answer is still on the way. But, oh, God, you are the God who keeps every promise you make. That's the hope. That's the hope that is produced in you from your proven character, the proven character that comes as you endure and you run with endurance. When the afflictions come, when the trials come, when the troubles come. Amen? Amen. There's a reward for endurance, brothers and sisters. There are many rewards for endurance. And it's time to stop right here. But I want to encourage you. I'm going to give you the last verse, and we're going to come back to it next week. But it's time to stop. Look at this. After Paul, uh, sorry, we don't know. Maybe Paul didn't write Hebrews. We're not sure. The writer of Hebrews, okay? Look, Look at what he says. He says, so take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path. Because you've got to run. You're going to have to run for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. So if if you've gotten shaky, it's time to buck up. It's time. And you keep running with endurance. It's worth it to run with endurance. Amen? Amen? It's time to stop. Let's pray for one another this morning. Okay. Scott, you're going to pray for us. Uh. (laughs) Somebody give him a microphone. Hang on just a minute. We got got it. Because Scott's been enduring. I know know he's going to endure. They've been enduring through some things. Can the camera see him or does he need to come up here? What, what, what? You'll go to him. All right. Scott, bring a word in prayer to us, brother. Amen. Would you bow your head? Heavenly Father, we love you today. We are desperate for you. Amen. God, we thank you that through your word this morning, we're encouraged and we're inspired to persevere, to continue to endure the race that you set before us. God, we thank you that it's an invitation to put our trust into you. It's an invitation to trust you in spite of all things, in light of all things. God, we're asking you today, would you open up our hearts, our minds, our ears, our spirits to trust you in our trials, to trust you with the low places, the places that seem uh, the darkest, the places where we are so easily distracted, so easily put off course. But you said, be of great courage, have joy, be expectant. Not, not because the trial is what you should celebrate, but your victory through the trial. That everything that we do, everything that we experience, God, you are doing so that it can both shape us into your image and bring glory to your name. God, we thank you today that we get to bring glory to your name through the hard times, through the low times, through even the high times. Those things we do celebrate, all of the weight, all of the sin. God, that's all yours. We give it to you today. God, we're reminded that we are only human. We cannot carry this alone. In our attempt to carry it alone, we have fallen short. So God, we put our hope back into you. We reposition ourselves under your mighty hand. We ask you, God, give us courage. Give us grace. Inspire us to continue this race, God. Give us the endurance we need to bring your glory to the earth. God, we ask you in every situation represented in this room, represented online, God, whatever they're dealing with at their home or work, God, we're asking you for victorious, uh, a victorious perseverance, God, so that you can be glorified. God, our prayer today is not just we would make it through something, but we'd make it through the trial looking more like you. It is our desire today, God, that we would be molded, shaped, and formed into your perfect image. 
And God, we know that that can only come through trial and tribulation. It can only come through the perseverance, the endurance to, to finish the race. God, I thank you for those that have finished the race, those that stand before you today and in chorus sing holy, holy, holy. They, they worship you today, but God, from here, we also declare your holiness. Hallelujah. We declare your sovereignty, your godness, who you are is so supreme, so real. And so, God, we link our faith with you today, God. I pray for wisdom, insight, and direction in this room. God, I pray you would help us to lead well, the, God, in the things that you've placed before us. God, so these things can happen. You can be glorified and your kingdom can be advanced. We thank you for all these things and more. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Run with endurance this week. We invite you to be part of the Christmas pictures now, right? Um, who's going to organize? I preached. Scott prayed. <laughs> if you're tall, if you're tall, come stand in the back, right? And, and